In the last week, it was unveiled by the New York Times that a startup founded by an Australian is being used by law enforcement agencies all around the world to keep track of people's faces. But how and what is it? To debate that, we have Tegan Jones, the editor of Gizmodo, and Ariel Bogle from the ABC's Science Unit Technology Reporter. So it's called Clearview AI. Just introduce it to me. What is it? So at its basic functionality, as the New York Times describes it, if you're a police officer and you have someone's image from, say, a robbery or some kind of crime, you take that image of their face, put it into this app, and it would return to you pictures that match that person that are available publicly. So this company, Clearview AI, claims it has scraped, you know, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Venmo, and has just millions, millions of photos of people from the public internet, which makes it a kind of search engine for faces, anyone's face, and not just images that they've willingly given up to law enforcement, say, when you get a passport or a driver's licence. These are just the photos that we've put online just to use social media. And it's not publicly available, is it? No. So at the moment, uh, even the website says that it's very much just for law enforcement at the moment. You can apply for it if you're law enforcement, but... Despite that, it hasn't really stopped people really worrying about this, uh, especially because, you know, one of the points that was brought up by um, a police sergeant in the article is that it's great because it can scrape photos that wouldn't be in their police database because Mm. maybe that person hasn't been arrested for an offence before. But that's why it's also terrifying because you're in a database, even though you haven't committed a crime before. Let's just take where they got the photos. They did an exercise in scraping, they claim, that has really probably touched everybody, everybody that's ever had any kind of online profile, if what they claim is true, because nobody has verified it, nobody's been inside the company and seen all this data that they claim to have. When we put our photos on Facebook, however many years ago, we probably did not imagine being in a facial recognition database by some obscure New York startup founded by an Australian serving police departments in the United States. Mm. It's not really what we probably imagined for ourselves. It's definitely not. And in fact, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Google, they do say in their terms and conditions that scraping is not allowed. So this company may have, in fact, broken the terms and conditions of these platforms themselves. That, as a sidebar, will be interesting to see if any of these companies take legal action against Clearview AI. Mm. Um, That would be a really interesting exercise in discovery. So please do it, Facebook. Be the one good thing you do this year. <laughs> hey, hey, the year is very young. They might do something else good. Uh, this is the year I feel like I, I feel obliged to give them the benefit of the doubt, <laughs> at least for the first episode of the, the year. Um, now, Tegan, you actually went off and, and you asked the AFP if they were using it. What did they say in your story for Gizmodo? Yeah, so uh, they did say uh, in a very short statement but that they're not using it, but they also said that they wouldn't answer any speculative questions. So I did also ask about whether they were planning on uh, using it, whether they were in talks with Clearview AI, and the only response I got to that was that uh, they basically don't, you know, have knowledge of that essentially. So, you know, they're, they're not saying anything around that. I also contacted ASIO but haven't heard back from them. But but just because they're not using it now doesn't mean that they're not in talks because there was no response on that. It also doesn't mean that they're not using some other app as yeah, well. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm you sure this I mean? isn't the only thing that does this. That's right. And so, uh, you know, it doesn't rule it out, especially when it has been so successful from what it was saying in that New York Times article. Uh, the author themselves ran a photo of themselves through uh, the system through a detective that was signed up to the service. And originally it came up with, you know, a bunch of photos, ones that they didn't even, had never seen of themselves before. So someone else might have taken it 10 years ago and uploaded it to social media publicly because they have stipulated that it is only publicly available images that will be scraped. So let's say you had a like a public Facebook profile and that if you locked it down now, if you've already been scraped, it's too late. But they're in the process of being able to let people request that their images are deleted if they've privatized later. But if there's no way to know you're on that system because it's not publicly available, how would you even know? Like they're barely talking to anybody. There has been no independent testing of how it even works. There's been nothing. Uh, so it's just so murky and scary. Mm. One other thing we don't know because there hasn't been publicly verified their, their facial recognition algorithm is how it does on race because as the past few years we've seen a lot of coverage of the fact that a lot of facial recognition algorithms 
have racial bias and they misidentify often people of colour. Black people in the United States have been misidentified more often because of the way these data sets have been trained, the types of faces they've been trained on. Often they're worse at women than men. You know, there's a whole host of images within that. But of course, that's getting into arguing for it to be a better algorithm. Um, We probably need to start at the beginning here in Australia and have a discussion about whether we're comfortable with this type of technology full stop, because almost every state police force in the country has facial recognition technology right now. They use it right now without much public scrutiny. And Mm -hmm. so we need to have a conversation publicly first. One of the things they're, they're saying about this is that it's great because it can use an imperfect image, uh, which I think, okay, great, like it worked for this journalist, but the misidentification, that's going to happen for sure. And the other thing about this is in the US and in Australia, there seems to be so much facial recognition technology happening when all of the legislation and uh, everything around it is still in its infancy. There are things that seem to be, happening in schools and in law enforcement, uh, that they're just doing it and they're worrying about legislation and worrying about questions around it later. Mm. And I mean, in the US, there's been prosecutions that have gone into effect because of this technology, because of this app, uh, whether it was correct or not, ranging from theft to murder. So, you know, whether that was that person or not isn't the point. There needs to be some verification around this and some legislation around it before it goes too far. Mm. All right, there's lots more of this in the podcast of Download This Show. It is available now wherever you podcast. You can get it on Apple Podcasts, Pocket Casts, wherever you go. Just look up Download The Show and we will be there. <laughs> <laughs>